All right, so I had it in my heart to make some videos about the times that we are living in. And today I really wanna talk about signs of the times and just being prepared, having our life in order, having our, uh, as you could say, your house in order, just knowing the day that we're living in, the age that we are living in and being prepared for it. Because let me start by saying this, you know, we have seen an incredible era of technology take place. We have seen the rise of the gospel being spread around the world through technology. And there's many blessings that have been a part of that. It's actually been incredible. Um, but there's also been some downsides of that, I think, with this, this push in the church for kind of like worldliness at times and popularity and people saying almost like they want their message to be more inclusive. They want uh, to adjust their gospel to the times of culture. They, um, you know, there's, there's many things that have been going on for a long time in the world. And uh, I want to address some of those things and just say, we are living in the times that Jesus talked about in, uh, what is that, Matthew 24. And so first thing is first, having your own life in order. And in Luke 14, it's very interesting that Jesus gives a parable and he talks about this feast and there's a man preparing a feast and he goes and he tells uh, his servant to bring in the guests that he's invited. These guests immediately come up with excuses why they can't come. One of them says, um, I just bought a field and I, I need to go check on it. Please excuse me. And the other one says, um, look, I just bought oxen. I need to go try them out. And the other one says, I just got married. I can't come. So here we have people who are invited to the feast that has been prepared for them, right? Cause we are living in the dispensation of grace right now, which means that Jesus has prepared all things for the church. And so these people use worldliness as their excuse. And why do I say that? Cause everything they depict here is worldly. It's all about things. It's about relationships. Um, it's about work. It's about this or whatever. And so worldliness, let me define worldliness like this. Worldliness is when you love the things of the world, the opinions of the world. You love material things. You love the clout of man. You love the fact when celebrities, you know, churches that have celebrities and they, they get this pat on the back and they, they, they have this certain look and feel that if you're discerning the spirit, it just feels off, you know? It just feels like, wait, that doesn't seem right to me. And so what that is, is that's just worldliness. It's sensual. It's seductive um, to mankind's flesh. And so godliness is actually all about loving the Lord above anything else. And that's why First John says, if you love the world or the things in the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Well, that's great news because it means that if you repent and turn from the world and you turn to Jesus and you turn your heart and your affections on God, that you'll be filled with the love of the Father and you won't want the things of the world anymore. You won't, and, and I'm not talking about being successful or having a job or doing well. Those are all things that God wants you to do, but this is about the heart. And I think you guys can understand the difference. There are very godly people who love the Lord. They wouldn't sell out to the world for anything. And they are very successful in business and things like that. We need those people. Trust me, the church needs those people. Missionaries need people to be making money. Okay. The kingdom of God needs finances, but, um, the difference is worldliness, uh, comes into the church and instead of having powerful, messages that are based on truth that are based on the word they now become popular for culture they now become uh easy for people to digest like milk of the word right that it talks about it. paul said you still need milk you can't get to meat and um people throw out sections of the bible they they don't talk about true righteousness and holiness that grace has given us, right? Grace is actually the empowerment to overcome sin and live a life of holiness. And that is how we are called to live. We are called to be holy as he is holy 
through literally what he has done for us by grace. But when people don't want to talk about holiness, they don't want to talk about sin or types of sin, or they don't want to talk about hell, and they just want it to be like motivational, and they just want it to be um, this happy message all the time, rah, rah, rah. Well, look, the Bible is the good news. So absolutely, it should be giving you peace, joy, and happiness and all of these things. But there also should be a lifting up and a lifting out of where you're at. And we shouldn't be ashamed or afraid to talk about uh, issues of sin that are uh, hurting people. Because that's the whole point. Sin is destructive. Sin comes to destroy your life. And that's why Jesus overcame it so that we would not live in sin, but we would be free from it. And so when people don't want to talk about social issues, they don't want to talk about agendas against the church. Um, they don't want to get involved in politics. They want to just kind of live in their bubble and not acknowledge all of the word of God or the times that we're living in. Okay, so... We are called, and this is what's awesome. It's just like, Lord, in, 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 in your heart, it's a focusing back on the Lord. It's just a turning yourself in repentance to say, all of the things I've been caught up with um, when it comes to worldly things or just loving the world, just loving myself and there's selfishness in all of us, you know what I mean? So where it's gotten out of bounds or out of line. It's just a shifting back. It's just a repentance. It's a turning back to your first love and saying, you know what, like that feast, there's no excuse that's going to keep me from that feast that my Lord has prepared for me. He is going to be my greatest pursuit. He is going to be my greatest love and my greatest treasure. Because what happens is when these people don't come, it says, hey, bring in the lame and the cripple and the blind and, and there's more room. Go out and get those in the byways and the highways. So there'll be those who want to come. They're going to come full force. They're going to come in abandonment to the Lord. They're going to be there. Um, and that that I know that's me. I believe that will be you when he is our pearl of great price. So we seek him above all else. And, you know, I just want to talk real quick about the times. And so that's what I want to get in. Why does worldliness play so uh, much into the signs of the times? Because worldliness brings in deception. And it tells us here in 1 Timothy uh, for first Timothy four. Now the spirit expressively says that in the latter times, which is now because he was taught, this is the beginning of the church. So we are in the latter times. Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving or seducing seductive spirits and, um, doctrines of demons. So that spirit is seductive and it's a sign of the times that people will be seduced by it. And it's a sign that Jesus immediately gave. And Jesus, in Matthew 24, is being specifically asked by the disciples, what are the signs? What are the signs of what's going to happen when the age is going to end? Please go read this. And I also got a, um, a lot of this from Rick Renner's teaching on signs of the times. I encourage you to go watch the videos. I'll put the link um, description below and I'll put it in my, my story. It's really good. And it's super thorough. And he goes all into the Greek, um, which I'm not going to do today. I'm just going to pick out a few things, but do watch that. You will be shocked. You will be shocked at how much is depicting the age that we're living in right now. When you hear him describe each Greek word and stuff, it's incredible. So first of all, it's just interesting right now that he says the very first thing I'm reading in the Amplified, the very first thing he says is be careful that no one misleads you deceiving you and leading you into error. So the, the New King James would be, be careful that no one deceives you. And that word deceives, they put here error. It is moving from the foundation of the gospel, the foundation of the word, the foundation of moral values that we have from the Bible and leading you into error, leading people into um, immorality in a way or into what is not of the Bible. Because they want to be more inclusive. They don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. They don't want to um, say anything that rubs, you know, makes a schism or makes people feel uncomfortable. So it's a leading into air. And he says, next, in five, four, many will come in my name, misusing it, misappropriating it, um, the strength of my name, which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the anointed one. They will mislead many. And if you read it, 
But what it's saying is they're going to come saying, I am the Christ. And what they're going to do, the word Christ means anointed. So they're saying, my anointing is from God. And they'll build a platform. They'll build churches, ministries, organizations, and they'll say, I'm of God. And maybe at one point they were. But what is happening is they are using the name of Jesus to increase their platform, but they are not of God. They will mislead many. And so the church, the, the video I made on church deception not that long ago was specifically for this. Because it says many will be misled. And I don't want people to be misled. I don't want that falling away. Because there are going to be and are now people, I'm not specifically talking about anybody, that are misusing their platforms. And this will come even more in full, full forward that... People use the name of Jesus and they are not of him. Um, and so it says, now you will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. And he says here in the Greek is like an earful. You're going to have ears full of information. Ears full of information of wars, rumors of wars. And that has been going on. And there are skirmishes all over the world. There's always rumors of wars at this point. Um, see that you're not frightened for those things must take place, but it is not yet the end of the age. So there's more to come. He says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places, pestilences. Okay. Let's just take a look at this nation against nation can be governments against governments. It could be countries against countries, tribes against tribes. It can be race against race, like black or white or tribe against tribe. It can also in kingdom Kingdom here is actually talking about um, even influence, ways of thought. So kingdom against kingdom can be on the line of thought patterns, different views on how things should be done, how things should be led. And we see tons of that right now. There's tons of different thought patterns um, being presented in the world these days. Famines, earthquakes, uh, pestilences. So pestilences... We're already seeing plagues. It's talking about there's going to be multiple types of plagues, old and new, are going to be in the earth. We are, we're already seeing that with coronavirus. Um, and then the government lockdown globally is unbelievable for this day and age. So um, he says this, but in all things, in verse 8, these are merely the beginning of birth pains. So, or it says sorrows. So this is birth pains that are happening in the earth and then they will hand you over. Listen, this is coming. Now, this is a, in, in history, we are seeing the largest persecution of Christians that we've seen. Most people don't even know about it, but Christians are being persecuted all over the world for their faith and it's now coming to the Americans. Americans are gonna be experiencing persecution like they aren't familiar with, but it's a sign of the times. And then they will hand you over to endure tribulation. They will put you to death. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will be offended and repelled by the association of me. Wow, we are really seeing that. And will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. Many false prophets will appear and mislead many because lawlessness has increased the love of most people will grow cold, but the one who endures and bears up, then he will be saved. And the good news of the kingdom of the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world and all the nations. And then the end will come. This is interesting. Let's just break this down really quickly because it talks about all the persecution that's coming to the church. That is coming, you guys, but it's glorious. Don't, don't resist that. And then it talks about um, how you are going to right here it says that because lawlessness has increased and the love of most people will grow cold lawlessness has increased to such a point that it is crazy it doesn't make sense it's full of confusion there is no right or wrong to people so um it's going to be misleading for many but if we keep our hearts focused on the lord if we keep ourselves clean from worldliness, which the Bible says, come out and be separate, right? Hate, hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. We will not be given over to deception. We will be able to stand fast in the truth. And that's an exciting time, you guys.